hello and welcome to Cirque de la Mort, a high-flying murder mystery. We at Lavoris and Vox Circus thank you for joining us tonight as we unravel the mystery of the Blackwoods. Before we begin, however, we have a few announcements. First, in the event of a fire, please exit through the doors where you entered from, the ones behind your seats. Second, we use flashing lights throughout the show, with strobe lights used during the end of the first act. Finally, we ask that you do not photograph for performers during their performances as to not distract them, or the fellow audience members around you. Footage of the performance will be uploaded to our YouTube channel for you to relive this memory, or to show it to your friends who could not make it tonight. Thank you again, and enjoy the show. story of Julius Blackwood, the drunken revelry, the scandalous affair, and his untimely death. But I'm here to set the record straight. Our story begins at the Blackwood Manor. Julius Blackwood was well known for throwing lavish dinner parties with the most eclectic of guests, and tonight was no different, as a bizarre assortment of characters gathered at the evening soiree. Thank you. 
colleagues and family, welcome. <laughs> I truly couldn't be more delighted to be in the company of such good people tonight. Here we have the world's greatest artists, performers, and thinkers of our time. So talk, drink, honor guests, make yourselves at home. Please leave all overcoats, canes, and top hats with the doorman. From that moment, you'll be out of place and under the rest. I'm wrecking the TV already and loving every minute of it. Ruining this banquet for the mildly inspiring end. Please leave all overcoats, canes, and top hats with the doorman. From that moment, you'll be out of place and under the rest. with accentuating off white pinstripes whoa everything goes according to plan all the new kids will never be better <laughs> so lips when did he get all comfort to have you do her that I'm the new cancer never look better
without your love anymore.
I'll do the same as you, I'll try and hold it up Soon I hope, or as soon as I'm old enough Stay forever, you know more than anyone, yeah, whoa, whoa, and it's you that knows my darkness, and you know my bedroom needs, you can blast me in my secrets, <laughs> bro, you just know me. so ridiculously clumsy. I once caught one of them pouring a citrus acid into one of Mrs. Blackwood's martinis. I had to snatch it away before she took a sip. Uh, he exaggerates a lot. told me that he'd begun to feel ill. It happened just like this. Uh, Bartholomew, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think the champagne may be getting to me. Sir, do you need some aspirin? No, that's, that's quite all right. I think I just need to lie down for a second. Sir, 
Sir.
interviewed everybody in the manor, two guests eluded her eye. Cassandra Clare and Marcel Marcello Caporasso had already known each other. Clare, a renowned chemistry professor at Lavoris University, was brewing drugs in her university lab and selling them to Caporasso for profit. And they had initially made a killing, but eventually things turned sour. Caparasso, a known hothead and member of the Mafia, took that night to try and make an attempt to get rid of the professor for good. Exactly. The pain is that I'm not cleaning you out. I'm not satisfied to you. Today I'm thinking. 
thing about the things that I did me. I don't think I'm going to do them like I want to dance me. Step on the glass, stack with your tongue. Bury a friend, try to wake up. Cannibal class, killing the sun. I know the rumors, detective, but I haven't had any interest in Julius for years. If there was anyone I had my eye on tonight, it was that buff Italian guy. <laughs> Marcello Caparazzo? I think that was his name. Ah, yes, well, sources tell me that he's been distributing narcotics to the upper class. Can you tell me anything about that? No idea. But I know a rich man when I see one. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> the manager walks in the joint. I could see you were a right off the station. Real big stand up. Good looking. <laughs>
sets him apart from any other entitled aristocrat. But, if you ask me, none of the people here are his friends. People like Julius Blackwood don't have friends. Everyone wants something from them. Or wants them dead, I guess. I never asked for any of this. If I knew something like this was going to happen, I never would have come here in the first place. So long, I can't remember how we got there or how we survived. So long, I'm trying to run from a pride at least I found my atmosphere. And I remember I was. Oh, 
it seems like I've the world away Things will be better in America I heard the streets are cold Maybe I can fly you at this place someday I'm chasing dreams like I'm an old game Screaming through your airways Looking back I almost thought I heard you say and Professor Claire and I had groundbreaking plans for it. You don't think the project is going to get shut down, do you? That would be beyond my realm of knowledge. But please, tell me more about the Sustainability Center. What was it like working with Mr. Blackwood? Well, Mr. Blackwood mainly worked with my supervisor, Professor Claire, so I don't have much to say. I was just happy that he was able to contribute to such an important cause. I can't believe he's gone.
settled. I understand that you had dealings with Julius Blackwood together in regards to your fashion line. Did you ever find any reason to think that someone might want anything suspicious or want to wish him harm? I can't say I have, in the business room at least. But I have been coming to these soirees for quite some time. And I think one of the maids has a weird infatuation with Mrs. Blackwood. It's really creepy. I've tried to tell her. Not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> I mostly come here to see potential investors and clients. So, detective, unless you have something to talk to me about that, I have nothing more to say.
night's events have been very distressing. So, I would like to know if you've ever heard anything suspicious about the Blackwoods in your time here. Mr. Blackwood was a very good employer. I would have never expected him to be murdered. But if there's anyone I really thought needed protecting, it was Mrs. Blackwood. People always forget the target that she has on her back. <laughs> I overheard her arguing with Cassandra Clare. The chemist? That's the one. She stormed in about a week ago, demanding to speak to Mrs. Blackwood. The other maid said she sounded nervous, even panicked that maybe Mr. Blackwood would pull funding from her research. But did she ever go and talk to Mr. Blackwood? Of course not. People always come to Mrs. Blackwood when they have a bone to pick with her husband. And some of his associates are so truly, truly dangerous. It just gives me so much grief that she's in the middle of all this conflict. But don't worry. I'm always here to make sure she's safe. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some cleaning to get to. <laughs> <laughs> detective raced to the next room in search of the professor, but she wasn't there. 
Worse still, Veronica Blackwood and Marcello Caparasso were gone. All signs pointed to the mafioso and the professor as the culprits. The detective raced to find Veronica, for the criminal duo got to her first. was murdered, but I still can't believe he's gone. I'm sorry it had to turn out this way, but you should know. Julius isn't the only one who's been touched by death tonight. What are you talking about? Well, the Marcello plan didn't go as expected. He found out we were going to frame him for Julius's murder, and he tried to kill me, but I got rid of him. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're okay. <laughs> and we still have our plan B. Right, do you have the cash? Yes, and the car is parked out back. We're almost finished with this, once and for all. Story of 
what happened that night. <laughs> and, and I should know. I, I was there. Dancers may be on the floor. You put my eyes.